Okay, we got here a 2008 Toyota Camry. Customer complaint is it's a crank no start. The car came in without a battery. It was just empty here. Um, mass airflow was unplugged. This was all apart. So I put back together. The shop gave me a battery. It doesn't really fit, but it's enough to get the car to crank. We got the key here. Let's see. That's the security lights over there, and it's not on. So I don't believe the security issue. Okay, let's crank. We got nothing. Now, the compression sounds a little bit uneven, but I think it's just because um, he's been cranking it for a while. All right, if you look now, there is no check engine light. Yeah, there's no check engine light. So, um, we probably have no communication to the computer. Let me plug in a scan tool. Right, let's do a auto scan. Yeah, okay, this is not working. This is probably no com. Let's go to scan and Toyota. Okay. All right, I can't identify it, so Camry 2008. I don't know which one this is. I don't really care. Without smart key, with Philly call stability. Looking at this, we have no comm to the ECM. We do have communication to the ABS, the, what's this, the cluster? I guess this is the combination meter which is the cluster. Um, it lost com with the ECM, it has a history code. The AC has the open refrigerant, okay, probably low and free on. The, we have comp to the PCM, what's this, the ECT? That's the transmission, I think. But that, I believe, is in the same module as the PCM. So that's why we have no comp to that. Driver door module, I don't know if, you know, I don't know if it's a separate issue. Gateway, I don't think these cars have it. Okay, fine. So we're pretty much just missing communication to the computer. That's why, I'm assuming that's why this car is not starting. So where do we start from here? Now, I could check at the DLC if we have like a good network, but since we have communication to everything else, I'm going to ignore that for now. And I'm going to chase power and grounds to this computer. Let me pull up a diagram. All right, let's pull up a diagram. So down here. Power train management, engine control module. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's first pull the whole thing up. Okay, so we have here a battery power. Okay. Now that is from hot at all times, the EFI fuse, a 10 amp fuse. Hot at all times. Now. Um, we have a battery over here and a battery over here, which come from the same fuse. But these come from EFI fuse 2, but the power from it comes, if you follow it, it comes from this relay over here, the EFI relay. Now, the EFI relay gets a power from the EFI main fuse, and then the way it's controlled is by turning on, well, it's grounded the whole time through this ground over here. And... The power is turned on, I believe, by the computer. Let me see. Here's the control. This gives power, and that's from the computer. So it turns itself on. So we need initial power, and then we need it to turn on by we need it to turn on these relays, which give everything else power. Okay, let's see what else we have. There's the ignition fuse, which is hot and on or start. Now, I'm not sure how that gets power. We'd have to look at a diagram for that, but let's see. This yellow wire goes straight to the computer also. Okay, great. That's telling the ignition switch of the computer. So if this has to have power, so we have to check this wire. This wire is under the dash. Um, 
Okay, there's a stop fuse going to there. Gauge one fuse. Feeds the park neutral switch, which we know it cranks, so we know that's good. We don't have to deal with that. This fuse also splits up and goes to the C open relay and to the stop meter fuse. Fine. So I want to check this fuse number first, this fuse, and we'll first check the shoot fuses under the hood, and then we'll check those. Let's get a test light um, right here. Test light. What else do I need? Well, let me just bring out a breakout box just in case. And I'm open the meter. All right. So we got a test light here. Let's check if the battery negative. If I hit a positive, it lights up. Let's see, what do we need? Okay, so first we need um, a constant power. Identify number one. Use a pen amp. That's EFI 3, 2, ECUB. EFI number one, a 10 amp. It's this guy right here. It has power on one side and power on the other. Okay, let's just check these other EFIs. And they have no power, but these are fuses that are only powered up by this relay. Now, it get, that relay gets power from this fuse, which lights up on both uh, on both sides. That's the power we know to that's good. Now the computer grounds it. Okay, that we have to see separately. Now I do see some aftermarket stuff here, which I don't know what they are yet. Uh, going into the fuse box, it's coming out over here. And it goes into the firewall. Two wires. I think it's like some sort of cutoff switch. I don't know. I hate aftermarket stuff. Um, okay. So let's see. Now let me check this fuse under the hood now. Under the dash, sorry. Um, which fuse was that? This ignition fuse. Okay, I'm missing the cover, but I'm just gonna check these. And then we're gonna find, I'm just gonna check all of them. All right, so this 15 is blown. Let's change that. Because I don't have the diagram to see what it is. What's the fuse rule after? Is it a 15? No, it's actually a 10. So it's probably nothing. It's probably just like a cigarette lighter. But let's just change it. Okay. Let me just pull that guy out. All right, let's plug back in. Now, we have an engine light. No, we don't. Okay, so that was nothing. Now, what I have to make sure is that this 10 amp fuse is not just missing. So I gotta pull up a chart. So I was looking around and I found this picture, which is the same as our car. The ECU ignition number one is the bottom fuse, which was good. And the one that was blown was the injector fuse, which actually would cause it not to start. And I just to make sure that's not blown anymore. Then there's the, this fuse was blank. So we have all the fuses and they're all good. Let me just check one more time the fuse that I replaced to make sure it's not, didn't blow instantly. All right, so this is the one I replaced. It has power, and this is the one we need. And it has power on both sides. There's another ECU fuse over here, which is also good. All right, so the fuses are good. So now, let's go check that relay circuit. All 
Okay, so now, here we are. Let's, I just want to check maybe now that I changed that fuse, this turned on. Well, that we know is on, um, this guy. All right, it's still not on. The question is, if I give power to this, would it turn on? Let's try that. All right, so I'm going to pull this guy out. And put in this guy. And give power to it. I definitely heard some clicks. Well, let's go see if it turned on. Alright. So, nothing doing. Alright, I'm going to check power and grounds to this. Okay, so let's go to the small connector. A24, because it only has 60 pins. Alright. Let's see. Oh, that's already broken. That's good. Convenient. Let's see. This is the connector. Let me get... Let me find the wire that controls the relay. Pin 44. We need pin number 44. It's, let's see, this is the bottom side of it. So here's the big ones. So it's pin number, it's three in from here. Sorry, it's two in. So it's that one over there. Okay, but it's here. So it's two in. So it's this guy right here. This wire controls the relay. So let's see what we have on this. Get it. There's some probe. All right. So now I'm gonna test this relay. Let's see if it turns on. Okay. So let's see. Let me first put this to battery negative. See? It's not turning it on because I'm giving power here. Now that really should be on. And I probably have power here. Let me see if Steinman communicates. And we have a check engine light on. So the car start. No, but we have a check engine light. Could we communicate? Still can't communicate, but the engine light's on. It's actually flickering. Because I am through a test light. So, okay, let's turn the key on and we'll do a power and ground check. So we know that this relay works. It's just the computer. Now I don't hear it anymore. Oh, that means it's lighting it up. The computer is turning the circuit on. That means I should have power right here. And I do. That is so weird. Did I like fix the problem when I... That is really weird. That means right now it should be on by itself. Okay, so we know we have power to those circuits. Okay, I still have no comp to it. But it's doing its job. It's turning on that switch. I don't know where that relay is. No, it's not turning it on anymore. All right, I'm going to check power and grounds. So, pin 44 and 46. These two pins are grounds right here. So, how do I do this? Where's my light bulb? 
um, this guy. Well, all right, those two grounds are good. Okay, the pallet. So these two have to get powered up from the computer. So that we can't check yet. Um, this yellow wire, pin 20, should have be hot at all times. Pin 20 is this guy right here. And it's good. Ignition switch, 28. There's three in, one, two, three. And the car's on, that's good. Um, battery ignition switch. Now this, this relay control, I, I think there's a problem with wherever this relay is. I don't, I can't find it. I'm not sure if it's integrated into this or because the problem is it starts clicking when I play around with the fuse box and I was watching it and it was getting power you see right now it's clicking but I can't tell where it's coming from let's see does it have power now right now it does not have power this one So, I don't know where it's clicking from. I wonder if the grounds itself, you see, I don't know what these things are. So I have to trace that back. If not, we have power and grounds and then we have that computer. I don't know where it goes to. It, I don't know, it's just this connector. I don't know if it was plugged in or not. I couldn't see. But let's see if we got anything. I just pulled on it. And it came out. All right, you know what I want to do? I want to see if I can read this computer on the bench. I'm not convinced this is the computer, but I'm going to see if I can read it on the bench. All right, let's do that. All right, I'm feeling extremely not confident about this computer. I don't know why. I, it should just be a bad computer, but I don't know. Since I see a lot of the wires playing around with, and I heard that really clicking, so I'm testing the computer on the bench. So I'm plugging. These are all grounds. These are powers. Here's can high, can low. Now I'm gonna plug this in to this breakout box. Okay. And we're gonna plug this in over here. All right, now I need something to plug this into. That's the problem. You know, I'm just gonna run uh, a central core for my inverter. All right, so now I'm gonna plug this into this extension cord, which is going straight to my inverter. Now let's just see if it has power. It doesn't, why not? Because I didn't plug it into my tool. I'm an idiot. All right, now let's try that. Okay, good, now we have power. So let me get my scan tool connected to this and we'll see if we communicate. Alright, let's see. Let's go up here. Now we have to turn on both powers. That and okay, both of these have to be turned on. That's the ground. So we are pulling 280 milliamps, so I'm hoping we're connected. Good. Let's how is it? Let's just go fully out. We're gonna go into OBD scan. Let's see, if this communicates, then we have another problem. Right, that's the Canvas protocol. This is what should communicate. It failed. 
want to see if anything is what's the network showing Let's ground that there There is a network coming out of this computer. You see that? Can high and can low. But it's not true. This could be my scan tool talking. Let's see. Um, let's just do ECF. Enter. No com. This must be just reading my scan tool. Let's see if we'll prove that. Or just unplug the scan tool. There you go. So, reconnect. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's showing the scan tool is just a regular node on the network. It gives off a CAN signal just like anything else. But this computer is not communicating. All right, there's still no communication, so I think I'm going to call that computer. One more check, which I can't believe I forgot. I don't think I did it. I came back in the middle, so maybe that's when I missed it. Um, I never checked communication at the module. Let me just quickly check that before on these two wires. All right, so right now I have communication. With the thing unplugged, that means communication is getting there. Let me try can high. All right, same thing, but yeah. So I have communication without it. So I'm calling it back, computer. Four to six days later. All right, I just lost the footage. I by mistake. Um, had the thing on time warp, so it was. The whole video was like 23 seconds, but pretty much we're back on the Camry. I just plugged in this used computer that I got from eBay for like, uh, I think it was like $18. Um, when I went in the car, the check engine light turned on. So check engine lights on right over there. Now, obviously it starts and stalls because it's not synced to the car. So I did change the VIN with the scan tool. Um, now it has the correct VIN in it. Now what we got to do is I have this tool here. This is from Jarhead Diagnostics. Um, pretty much what this does is jumps pins 13 and 4. So we got to jump those two pins for a half hour and then we should be good. So turn the key off. I'm going to unplug my scan tool. And I'm going to plug this guy in instead. All right, now we're going to turn the key on. We should see blinking lights here. Probably that's we're in diagnostic mode. And if you look, we have some blinking lights. Those are blinking the ABS, the check engine light. Now we pretty much wait a half hour and this car should start to run. All right, I'll bring you back then. It's like, I don't know, like 35 minutes. So here goes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the key, pull out the jumper, and now this car should start. There we go, it's starting and running. Well, there's a lot of stuff to fix up, but at least it runs now. It revs up. They have to put all the hoses back together, but my job's done. All right. Thanks for watching.